My hands were shaking profusely. I could hear the patient on the phone talking in a, in a discouraged tone as if they gave up all hope. Sweat ran down my face and even landed on my keyboard as I sat there frozen. Sticky notes with scheduling information on them splattered chaotically around my desk and completely blurred my surroundings. So, this is it? Is there nothing else you could do? What, am I supposed to just not get medical attention and potentially die? This is ridiculous, the patient growled. There really wasn't anything I could do, and that made it even worse. I quickly chirped into the headset. Unfortunately, sir, I made many attempts to contact the department and there was no response. I would recommend going to the ER for the condition that you're in and I will send an urgent message to take care of this matter. He sighed, as if this were not the first time he had heard that same lousy excuse. Even I got annoyed just saying it. Okay, whatever, bye. And he hung up before I could robotically throw out the classic phrase, Thank you so much for your patience and have a wonderful day. God, was this my future? Would I be subject to this kind of lifestyle where days fade into the same repetitive hell loop? Is this the so-called American dream that people strive for? Will I even make it to college at this rate? I put myself on break and stormed out of the room. I work in one of the best job fields in America, customer service. Better yet, for a big California medical facility. Not in it, but at a call center. This was my life day in and day out. Letting patients down constantly, hearing patients die regularly, and needing to delete their accounts after. Patients on the brink of their deathbed, trying to contact their doctor while I was just the messenger. Constantly disappointing people because all I was taught was to schedule appointments and make up the rest as I went on. Oh yes, the epitome of heroism. Exactly where I wanted to be after getting out of the Navy. Another high intensity job. But this time I had a tiny stapler and a plaque with my name on it. That counts for something, right? I was miserable to say the least. Such a depressing environment. And on top of that, what I made from working for a month was the cost of my monthly rent. Gotta love not being able to afford anything these days. It's funny though, I felt stuck at this job like I did in the Navy. I was on a dock landing ship, which is like UberX for Marines and contractors. But the same mindset that was utilized in the call center was preached at my old command, which was, if it makes sense, it's wrong. All logic went out the window, and nobody looked out for people's best interests. It was the same from my experience on the ship. During COVID, we were stuck on the ship for a month in port, still in San Diego, and they wouldn't let me leave the ship to go to my grandmother's funeral. Unfortunately, me and a couple dozen other people that lost loved ones were tormented by staring at land and not being able to do anything about it. This was right before we left for an eight month deployment where it's already a rough experience being away from family and friends for that long. But add on not being able to leave the ship and being given access to only the pier and a single beer for your troubles. People were going insane because the most rewarding thing about deployment is connecting with the community in different countries and exploring the places we went to. And that was the one thing we weren't able to do. After deployment, I tried adjusting back into my normal life and couldn't really settle after that. I suffered from extreme levels of anxiety and my life was never the same. Nobody helps you through deployment like that. We're just taught to keep it pushing and stay quiet. And I never got to really heal from a lot of things because nobody cared to help if it had nothing to do with the ship's mission. I got out for many reasons, but this culture played a huge role in my decision. I did not want to be a part of the problem any longer. Once I got cell service in the back of the customer service building, on my break, I called my friend as coworkers passed by smiling at me like they were at Disneyland. You know when people just look too happy? Yeah, that was the people I worked with dreams of becoming the ultimate call center agent and finally getting the gold star award for not being tardy for a year straight hung on the cork board behind my desk. Yep, a real fantasy.
I cannot do this, Benny. I already went through enough trauma and stress to last me a lifetime when I was in the military. And now I'm getting paid even less to deal with it here. The managers do not care about the patients, and the hospitals always get mad if we ask for nurses' help. Like, oh, my bad. I am so sorry I'm asking you to do your job. Shit, I'll never do that again. So, what are you going to do? Benny asked. I can only tell you so much on what decision to make here. He worked in customer service too, as an IT for a very elite and snobby law firm. So when it came to misery meeting company and the clients he assisted, he understood. I just want to walk out right now. I really can't afford to, but at the same time, I wouldn't be able to afford life regardless of what I do. I kicked the gravel pebbles from the potholes that formed after the winter rain in the parking lot. Benny paused and gently said, I would just wait it out until you can get back on your own feet, you know? It can be risky. But if you do quit, I'll have your back. It's not the military. You're not forced to stay under contract. He was right. It didn't dawn on me until he said that. I had been so used to feeling trapped and stuck and nowhere near where I wanted to be, like this was the end of it. It's hard in this lifetime to not feel like life is ending before it even begins. Or at least in your 20s. But that's how I felt. Stuck. I am more prone to make financially smart decisions to survive than decisions that will keep me sane and happy. More likely to choose a life of despair in a career I hated that would keep me afloat capitalistically instead of following the path of hardship that would lead me to euphoria. The easy choice versus the hard choice. I walked back inside, lifted my badge, and waited for the access mom monitor to beep to let me back into the office. I listened to the hums of 60 voices talking to patients. Some were annoyed with the rude patient they were dealing with, some were having full-blown conversations with their trainers who worked from home, and others politely talking to patients making small talk. I never liked the office. The canary yellow tinted lighting that made my head throb, the stained cubicle panels that had been there for centuries, the popcorn paint on the walls held so much heat it felt like 90 degrees inside in the middle of December. No wonder the patients are unhappy with our services. I sat back down and noticed my manager was walking around saying hi to everyone. That was the first time I had ever seen that woman interact with the office or even do anything. Oh, sorry again. Why would anyone here do their job properly, especially as our employer? That makes too much sense. Melissa sneered. You doing okay? Still on break. I pointed at the computer with the little green light in the top right of the screen showing we were waiting for a call. Nope. She obliviously smiled and walked away. Hours were moving by so slowly, and yet my mind was racing. There had only been 45 to 50 calls at this point. And I say only because on average, we have typically got 110 calls per hour. But at this point, I was mentally drained. Not one person was nice. Some of them had the right to be mad, I'll give them that. And I was just going on autopilot mentally at this point. I was waiting for a sign to quit. And then it happened. I talked to an elderly woman with her husband chiming in every now and then, just trying to schedule appointments with a couple of providers. She was explaining how she was unhappy with the care and how she had not been able to schedule an appointment with her doctor for six months. The patient had cancer, yet had no spiteful sound in her voice. After helping her, she said, You've honestly been one of the nicest and most helpful schedulers we've ever spoken to. You know how, we know how hard it can be to work at this job, and we just appreciate you genuinely trying to do everything you could when you didn't have to. I thanked her, got her taken care of, and we ended the call. That broke me. Tears streamed down my face as I stared at the Windows symbol on the computer screen. Out of all the nasty and disrespectful comments or patients blaming their suffering on me, 
This was oddly worse than any of that. To me, her showing a small amount of kindness was all I needed to hear. I knew I didn't want to be a part of a system that could care less about people. A system that would just tell people what they wanted to hear to shut them up quickly or blatantly refuse them the proper care. That was not me. And I realized I had been the only one emotionally exhausted from this job for months because I was the only one who tried to help them. My mind was made up. I emptied out my desk in the last 10 minutes of my shift, wiped everything down, and stalked the clock like how kids on the last day of school wait for the bell to ring. 5 p.m. hit. I ran out of there, stormed up to the front desk, and turned in my badge to security. Once my Doc Martens hit the concrete outside, I could finally breathe. My chest was no longer tight, my tears dried on my rosy cheeks, and I looked at the sky dancing with pink and lilac colors in the sunset. I am free. Things are going to be just fine. <laughs>